Hi, you guys. Welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know, I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners with exam success internationally. Now, I always like to go over my disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, and any of the questions that you see here, I have designed and created based on the current guidelines being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, any other videos that you see that I may be teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. Question number one states, a patient presents to the office with complaints of facial weakness and drooping to the left side of her face. She also mentions a change in taste. Upon examination, the nurse practitioner notes unilateral facial drooping. When the nurse practitioner inquires of any numbness, the patient denies. Based on these findings, what is the best diagnosis at this time? Is it A, trigeminal neuralgia, B, Bell's palsy, C, myasthenia gravis, or D, stroke? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. Now, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first because it allows you to slow down to ensure that you're answering what is even being asked of you. So here, the stem of the question states, based on these findings, what is the best diagnosis at this time? And you know, I tell you, if they're asking you about a diagnosis, you need to run it back and see what the assessment findings are. So this patient came in complaining of facial weakness and drooping to the left side of her face. She also mentions a change in taste. And upon exam, the nurse practitioner notes that the patient does have unilateral facial drooping. Um, and she inquires if there is any numbness and the patient denies. So a few things that, that makes you think of, because when you start to think about facial drooping, you know, we start to think of Bell's palsy, we start to th think of um, strokes, right? But here they're having weakness and a change in taste. This is um, more along the lines of B, Bell's palsy. So B is your best answer. All right, question number two, the nurse practitioner has confirmed the diagnosis of Bell's palsy. What is the best treatment? Is it A, prednisone and aspirin, B, prednisone and acyclovir, C, doxycycline and aspirin, or D, corticosporin and Tylenol? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so step to the question here, what is the best treatment? So I always tell you, if it's asking for treatment, you need to run it back and see if they have provided you with a diagnosis. And in the event that they have not provided the diagnosis, you need to run it back a step further and find the assessment um, findings so that you can determine the diagnosis because we have to know what it is to be able to treat it, right? So here we have a diagnosis of Bell's palsy. So how do we treat Bell's palsy? Your best answer is B, prednisone and acyclovir. Remembering that um, Bell's palsy has a viral component um, and source, so that's where the acyclovir comes into place. All right, and lastly, question number three, as the patient has been diagnosed with Bell's palsy, the nurse practitioner is documenting which cranial nerve that has been affected. What is the appropriate cranial nerve to document? Is it A, cranial nerve one, B, cranial nerve 10, C, cranial nerve seven, or D, cranial nerve three. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, and here, stem of the question states, what is the appropriate cranial nerve to document? Remembering Bill's palsy um, is facial paralysis, unilateral, unilateral facial paralysis, and that facial nerve is cranial nerve seven, so C is your best answer. All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But make sure to meet me back here. And if you need any of the resources that I offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email to the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. Now, the things that I do offer are the my review book, either in the ebook or paperback option, both are linked in the bio of this channel. If you are looking for an independent self-paced review designed for family and adult Jero, this is also linked in the bio of this channel. The five-week intensive review next one starts in September, and the link will be in the description to enroll for the September course. 
And then lastly, if you're looking for any of the one-on-one -on -one sessions, I always say to reach out to us as they are customized, but you can book a session either for a weakness. Um, you can book a session for exam readiness assessment, or you can book the custom package one-on-one -on -one sessions where you are provided with a pretest initially, and then we gauge where you are. And based on the timeline that you're looking to study, or I structure a study plan to work with you during that time frame to take you to a successful exam attempt. All right, you guys. But as always, make sure you meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.